Hello YouTube, this is Prank Call Pimp, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a cell phone jammer out of a simple TV remote. Cell phone jammers have become extremely popular within the last week because of the man who jams cell phone signals on buses because he's annoyed with people talking. Um, yes, and I, in the search term for cell phone jammers, gone up to one of the most popular things on the Google and the Yahoo because people are interested in them. Now these these things can range from anywhere from fifty to nine hundred dollars. And today this is about a fifteen dollar job. What you're gonna need is a old TV remote. This is from a classical TV, not a classical TV. This is a TV from about two thousand. Uh, it was typical TV, not a flat screen for all you kids that were born after the two thousand period. You only know what a flat screen TV looks like. An old TV looked the screen resembled a bubble. Anyway, this is what that remote was too. Any remote should do, because they are all essentially built the same. Anyway, what you're going to need is a cell phone battery, which works the best, a screwdriver, an old pair of earbuds, just this part, I've already cut off the earbuds, because all you need is this wire right here, and yeah, that one, you know what I'm saying? And then a hot glue gun. Alright? And hypothetically a pack of ketchup will help too that is if you have a very low powered remote and or battery hypothetically speaking tomatoes the properties of tomatoes have been said to decrease electro electrical resistance therefore allowing more to go through more electrical flow anyway i'm going to start off the tutorial like this all you need to do is remove the screws in the back and pull it off that's the easiest part of this, not that any of it's hard. Then you're going to see this part right here. The batteries that resemble springs where the batteries go. You're going to need to pull that up, and the rest of it should follow suit. And what's left in the remote will be this. This is unimportant, actually. This is just the buttons. Ha! Huh. Silly buttons. And then we have this. Now, next, what we're going to need to do, the whole point of this is, this chip right here, we want to overpower the signal going to the chip, which sends a signal here, because usually this chip is meant to handle a small electrical flow sent by the double A's to handle just what the TV can receive. But when we overpower this right here, it'll send an overpowered signal here, which will instead of commanding the TV, it will actually attempt to command other electronic devices in the area. But since this is not compatible with a cell phone, instead of commanding it, it will essentially confuse it, therefore making the cell phone not work. Now, to continue, what you're going to need to do first is take your earbud wire. Earbud wire. And this is where a knife can come in handy. I am going to use my lovely Swiss, and I'm just going to cut off a piece. This doesn't have to be a very long piece. Just cut off a piece here. It really works best if you just go like that. Cuts like butter. Try not to cut your hand on the way back. Now the best way to ex to extract the wire from inside is just to pull very hard on the string, therefore, not the string, that was stupid, the rubber, therefore stretching it out. Then the part that's left curly, like that, is where the wire is located. Now you just gotta pull a little bit, and then you can just pull out the scissor feature of your pocket knife, or a standard pair of scissors. I Just please wait while I pull that out. And you can just cut off the part that remains flappy and then oh, you should probably actually cut in a little bit to where it's solid and then you'll be faced with that and then you're just gonna wanna get off the end a little bit there we go see see how I cut off that corner now you're gonna just pull that out to the best of your ability okay I sorta of have it okay I got a piece of the rubber off Urgh. this is not the easiest thing in the world to do so do not be ashamed if it takes a couple tries. The way I'm going to do it is I'm just going to grab the rubber with my teeth and pull the string out. Don't worry about damaging the string inside because it's pretty durable, actually. So I'm just going to extract it real fast. <laughs> extract. That sounds so homosexual. All right. Anyway, this is what you'll be left with. You'll be left with this empty piece of string here. This, oh, my God, string. Rubber that, cut, that sealed it, and you'll have these three strings. A glue, a, if you're lucky, it'll be a green, a blue, and a red. This is the easiest. Now, you take this. You're going to want to move the green aside. That's what's going to be used to the lithium ion. And the red and the blue are going to be what actually sends the signals, all right? So now I'm going to attempt without knocking over the camera to show you how this works. See this right here? 
of course you see it because I'm holding it in front of the camera. This right here is the volume down button. It presses on it, and this is the volume up button. These are going to be your on and off buttons for your cell phone jammer. So what you're going to need to do is take the red one, this red, this red cable. It's sort of orange, and you're going to just need to put that in the dead center of it. I apologize if you cannot see. And you're going to just want to put a dab of hot glue on it. What does the hot glue does? It just holds it down and doesn't allow it to move. Now, this will allow the signal to be sent from the down button to the chip. Now, you might be thinking, if you're not a complete dullard, that that uh, glue is not very conductive. You don't need to worry about the conductive part, because as long as a piece of the string is touching the uh, volume up button, you're fine. It'll work just fine. All right, now, all you're going to need to do is take the other end of this and connect it to that main chip right there to the l to this side actually because it's backwards so you need to take it there and you're just going to need to glue it down you just have the tip of it touching if it's possible it doesn't matter where it touches on it all you need to do is get that hold that there and put a dab of hot glue on top of that as well all right oh i apologize it fell so i'm just going to do this real fast I'll burn myself. Caution, hot glue is hot. Okay, ah, shit, I failed. Um, After doing this so many times, making these for my friends, I should have figured it out. You can easily produce these in bulk because of the fact that they are so easily available. Now, the rest of it right here that hangs extra, you can just actually move that up here and just put a dot of hot glue on top of it just to hold it down. This won't do anything either. This will just keep it in place so you can essentially what you want to do is be able to put it back on so it looks like a TV remote. So that's fine now. You have the first piece. Now you're going to want to take the blue one. This blue piece right here, you probably can't tell the color on my camera. I'm sorry for that. And you're going to want to do the exact opposite. So you're going to attach that to the volume down button. So I'm going to just do that real fast. I'm not sure if you can see I am sorry, I'm not very, I'm not really able to see my camera screen right now. So you're just going to hold that down and put a dab of hot glue on it. And I want to caution you once again that hot glue is hot. It will burn the shit out of your fingers. Alright, so then you'll be left with something like that. Uh, there you go, you can see it. And then you're going to want to connect it to the opposite side of the chip where you put the orange. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm having a little bit of difficulty just because of the small parts and I have very big fingers. My hands are large. <laughs> I'm going to put that there. I'm going to put that there. Oh, bummer. Okay, I apologize. I failed miserably because I'm dumb. Just kidding. I'm not dumb, but I'm not exactly smart. Oh my god, this should not be this difficult. Ah. Uh. One more try should do it. Okay. I'm going to put a dab of hot glue on top of it. Get it attached to the chip. And we're good. So there you go. Don't worry about the sloppiness or cleanliness of your beads of hot glue because that does not matter. Now if you just want to clean up a little bit and keep it in place, just put another bead of hot glue on top of the blue. And then this is what you'll be left looking like. This right here. It looks a little crazy, and the spider web part is just like pieces of hot glue. Hot glue is very, it's not messy. It is messy, but it's not the bad kind of messy. You can just pull the strings off. It's sort of like corn on the cob when you go to peel it initially. When you go to husk the corn, I believe that's what it's called anyway. What you're going to do next is, all you're going to need is this part down here where the, can't, okay, the batteries go here, usually, all right? But instead, we are actually going to rig the remote. So it will accept the lithium ion cell phone battery. Now what you're gonna to want to do is put the buttons back in the remote. So it actually looks so it's disguised as a remote. You're going to want to put this back in there. Actually, I regret saying that, that is not the case. You don't want to put those back in there yet. You're gonna to want to put the battery in there first. Now to connect the battery to it, all you're going to need is the green string that came out of your earbuds. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, green string. All right, and you see this? You see the positive end here? You're gonna need to have one nub of it on one of the positive pieces. Okay, now look. 
All you need to do is hot glue it on there like so. I will show you in one second. I apologize. You're going to want it to look like that. And then, what you're going to need to do is simple, simple, simply, <laughs> simply string it through here. You need to wrap it around the first coil of the battery. You're going to need to just wrap it around a couple times. Not many is necessary. You just want to wrap it around and then you're going to want it to send it through the middle. This is the easiest way I find of getting it to touch both. Essentially, you just want it to go through the positive and the negative end. And then you're going to conclude at the negative end of the body. And then you're just going to hot glue that there. You're just going to make sure a metallic part of it shows because I actually have a stringy part of it coming out. So I had to glue it a little bit farther back. Whoops, hot glue gun fell. <laughs> Now look, now your lithium-ion battery is connected. Now what you can do is re reinsert your... Oh shit, I have a piece of hot glue going over the center, I apologize. Reinsert it into the remote. Reinsert it into the remote. Now this should work out fine, it should resemble something like this. Now what we can do is push that down. And this is the only part where it gets a little funky because this doesn't go back over it completely. But this will look like on the front. If you can, I don't know exactly. I've never tried to seal it back up after because I've never used it in public because it is sort of frowned upon and illegal in a sense. I guess if you can put a bead up there and a bead down here, that'll be fine. Uh, but to prove to you that it works, I have a cell phone right here. And to initiate, oh, okay, it's not even going to work. Uh, sealing the case that is the cell phone jammer should work fine in order to initiate the jamming of the cell phone see as you can see I do have bars right now I do have bars if you can see that um, in order to initiate the jammer you're going to need to press the volume up button you press it once and you give it a few seconds to gain the charge now observe as I try to send a text message on my phone Okay, well, open slide under data. Okay, um. Okay, you know what? Fuck that. I'm not gonna fuck this. Guy. Fuck the uh, text message. I'm just gonna try to make a phone call. As you can see, it still displays. Oh no, you couldn't see a second ago. As you can see, it still displays bars, but the phone is still receiving the bars. Like it's still receiving reception from the cell phone tower. Damn it, the hot glue gun fell again. But when it tries to send the signal out to it it won't be able to complete the call. So if you're on Verizon, you'll end up getting a message like this. I'm going to dial a random number. Um, hopefully it's a real one. I'm going to call it, and I'm going to put it on speakerphone so you can hear. It'll go on like any other kind of Welcome call. Welcome to Verizon Wireless. Your mobile number is either not active or is invalid. For assistance, please contact your wireless service provider. Announcement 13, switch 3, 2, dash 4, and that is the message they will get in response to call. So thank you for watching on how to make a cell phone jammer out of a TV remote. It is fairly simple. It should take you all about five minutes. It would have taken me a short amount of time, but I was attempting to record and do this at the same time. Also, in order to turn it off, all you have to do is press the volume down button. I'm pretty sure I made that obvious. Thank you for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. If you had any trouble while in the process of making this, don't be afraid to send me a message or leave it in a comment, a video response perhaps. I really appreciate the views. Pass this on to your friends. This should be a lot of fun. Save you some money. Thank you for watching.